In this step, we're going to get the material made for the wall. So we've already made a material like this with the floor. So we can go through the first part of this quickly. And then we're just going to make it tile on the walls in a slightly different way and create some UVs for this wall. You'll see what I mean by that very soon. So let's start with creating our new material then in the Hypershade. If you haven't done it already, make sure you clear your work area. Then it'll be a new AI standard surface. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it M underscore wall. I'm going to choose the clay preset again. And then we need to load in the color. So we'll click on the checker button, go to the file node, and then under image name, we need to find that texture. So we'll click on the folder icon. And then in the source images folder, you should have the T underscore wall textures. And we'll start with D, which is the diffuse. There it is. That's our wall texture. So we'll click on open. And we will see that I made a mistake. So instead of clicking on the checker button next to color, I did it on weight. And that's why I didn't get the result that I would expect. So let's fix that because that's wrong. So I'm just going to right click here and break connection. That will return that to normal. And then because I've already got it set up over here, I can just take the out color and drop that into base color there. And that's done the same effect. Next, then we are going to load in our roughness. So let's see if I can click in the right place this time. So check a button next to roughness under specular. There we go. And then choose file, click on the folder icon. And we're going to make sure that we choose wall underscore R for our texture. That takes care of that. And then finally, we're going to go down a little bit, choose the bump mapping, click on the checker button, tell it we want to file. Make sure we change users to tangent space normals. And then for the bump value, we'll click on here. And then image name, let's select wall underscore n for normal. And there we go. Looks a little bit extreme in this view, uh, but that's just the way it's lit. If we were to change this to preview in Arnold, you can see that it gives a much more subtle effect. So let's just change that back to hardware for now. So with that material done, what we're going to do is drop it onto our two walls. So I'll just do the middle mouse method for that. And you'll see that if I drop it onto this one over here, the blocks are too big, but it largely makes sense. On this wall over here, though, let's just drop it onto there. Oh my goodness, what is that mess? That is because we extruded to create the window earlier. So there's no UV information for this part of the shape. So Maya's just kind of making up and it's not going well. Okay, we need some UV mapping to sort that out. Let's just minimize our hypershade for a sec and then we need to sort it out. We'll do the easy one first. So we're going to do another planar projection because we need it to make sense on here. So what I'm going to do is have a look down here and you can see that Z is the direction that's going through that wall. And that's which direction we need to choose for our planar projection. Whichever axis goes through it is the one to choose. So we'll go to UV, planar, click on the little box, and it's going to be the Z axis. Make sure keep image width and height ratio is selected, and then project. Then don't do anything else. Maybe zoom out a little bit. You can see that it already looks better, but this manipulator is the thing that I really want now, because this allows us to tile it even further. So if I click on the top corner, I can then make this smaller until I'm sort of happy with the size of the blocks. And I'm kind of happy with them at about that size. Now, if I put it into object mode, we can zoom in and see that that's looking good. It's also looking good on the back, not that we'll see that. But I do want to show you there's a place that it doesn't look right. And that is on the top and the sides. And that's because these have also been mapped on the Z axis. This one really needed the X axis. Because we're never going to see these sides, though, I'm not going to fix it. But just so that you know why that's a problem, I thought I would point it out. And then we need to do the same with this wall. But we need to project on a different axis. It's X that goes through this one. So let's go to UV, planar, click on the little box, change it to the X axis, project. There you go. You can see that that gives us a better result. And then we're just going to scale this down so that it's about the same size as our other wall into object mode. And now as we sort of change the angle, you can see that that looks kind of nice. Oh, it's coming together. Okay, so again, at this stage, you might just want to flick on a quick Arnold render just to see how the wall looks in the proper view. In the next step, then, we're going to create and assign our material for the corks. 
It's not going to be anything new in terms of material creation, but we are going to take a look at cylindrical UV mapping to get it around the outside of the corks. So I'll see you there where we'll do a bit more UV mapping. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.